present Mr. Franklin for his five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When there are so many topics and issues we could be digging into here as Congress's Committee on Oversight and Reform, we are once again squandering the opportunity on something that is not germane to this body, but I'm not surprised. After all, it was here on this committee that I learned the person I'd always considered my mother isn't a mother at all. She's just a birthing person. On multiple occasions when I thought we might actually conduct oversight and discuss reform with respect to the breakdowns surrounding the events of January 6th, my Democrat colleagues refused to require leadership of the Capitol Police to testify, so I'm not surprised. But I am truly puzzled why you all, our witnesses, have chosen to be here. Instead of being back home in your state of Texas and doing the work you were elected to do, you cut and ran to D.C. and you brought COVID with you and you infected people while you were here at the Capitol, while you're Mr. at Mr. Chairman, I object. Personal text. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, the gentleman <laughs> has spoken of facts of the case, and uh, the gentleman okay. is, <clears throat> is speaking off publicly available information. All right. Th th I appreciate that, Mr. Sessions. You know what? In the spirit of uh, Chairman Cummings, here's what we're going to do. We're going to allow the gentleman to continue with whatever he wants to say, whether it's true or false or something else, and then there will be many opportunities Mr. Chairman, to respond. Mr. Chairman, we're under an obligation to tell the truth in this committee, and the gentleman is, in fact, responding to what would be publicly available information, and we did not interfere with your witnesses of the and, and No one is interfering. That's my whole point. He can continue with whatever it is he wants to say. He's got rights under the First Amendment and the the speech and debate clause. So please proceed, Mr. Franklin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe this hearing is just an opportunity to give you all something to do while you should be back in Texas. As a freshman Republican serving in the minority here in Congress, I've been on my share of a lot of losing votes. I don't enjoy it at all. But I think the Democrat Party has, the majority, has jammed through a lot of policies that are terrible for our country. But here's the deal. We cast our votes and we move ahead. And sure, on the Republican side, we'll message about how we think it's wrong. And then when those bad policies bear rotten fruit, like skyrocketing inflation, crippling national debt, a humanitarian crisis on our border, or spikes in violent crime, we can say we told you so. But we still suck it up, do our job, and take the votes. And we bide our time until we retake the majority. We don't act like a bunch of spo spoiled cowards running away and refusing to vote when it's clear we don't have the numbers to get our way. Ms. Thompson, in your testimony, which we just received about an hour before the hearing this morning, you stated that you support H.R. 1, which the House of Representatives passed earlier this year on straight party lines, no amendments, no opportunities for Republicans to offer amendments to that, straight party lines. H.R. 1 would essentially strip away authority the Constitution grants to state legislatures for fe by federalizing elections. In your oath of office for the Texas legislature, you swore, among other things, to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States. The framers of our Constitution wanted the authority for determining the manner of elections to rest with the state legislatures, not Congress, not appointed officials, not other elected officials, specifically and only the state legislatures. I can't fathom why you would want to cede power granted to your state back to the federal government. And I hope the good people of Texas are watching this and really understand what our witnesses are trying to do. They think the federal government knows better than you Texans how you should conduct your elections. The media and your liberal buddies try their darndest to paint you as heroes, but you're not. The truth is, uh, when, you, you know, when you sought office in the state legislature, you persuaded people in your districts that you were the ones who should represent their interest in the arena. You signed up for it, and Texans put their trust in you, and now you're failing them. Instead of being here, you should be getting on a plane at Reagan National and flying back to Texas in coach like the rest of us. And unlike the private jet you use to get here, they're going to make you wear a mask. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chairman, but with the balance of my time, I'd like to yield it to my colleague, Mr. Fallon. Thank you, Representative Franklin. You know, I, we're hearing so many things today that are either not true or the assertions are accompanied with absolutely no proof whatsoever. Uh, the chairman of this, not the subcommittee, but the chairman of the whole committee said that Texas is the hardest state in the union to vote. All right, let's look at 2016 to 2020. About Texas improved our turnout 8.8 percent. 
That was the ninth best out of 50 states in the country. So you can say whatever you want, doesn't make it true. Certainly that assertion wasn't true. The historical struggle for our African-American brothers and sisters to vote is real. That happened, and it's horrific. It's the largest and most horrible stain on our great country. We need free, honest, and open elections. And I get physically ill hearing the stories that Representative Thompson shared with us. Those were awful, but let's address the matter at hand today, which is the bill that you all broke quorum not to vote for. I hear a lot of things that you could offer amendments to to make it better. That's what the amendment process is all about. This bill isn't voter suppression. This bill is voter integrity. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Mr. Chairman, Thank I have a point of parliamentary inquiry. I'm sorry, where's that coming from? Right here. Oh, yeah, yes, Mr. Mfume, please. Mr. Chairman, I would ask, do the rules that govern the committee uh, permit Democrats or Republicans to defame witnesses uh, by calling them cowards and being unable to substantiate that. It just seems to me that that's outside of the realm of free and open discussion, and it is an act of defamation. Yeah, it is the, the spirit, the tradition, and I believe the rules of this committee to treat all witnesses with civility and respect. And as chair, I will not tolerate intimidation or abuse of witnesses, so everyone please take note, and I, I thank you, Mr. Mfume, for that clarification. I'm going to recognize myself for my five minutes of 